Hey guys, welcome back. Um, before we get started, uh, a couple things. Um, I just want you guys to, rem well, to remind you that I need you guys to subscribe down here in the corner so that you get notifications. Also, when you click subscribe, they've changed a little bit. Make sure you click on the little bell-shaped logo um, so that you get notifications and then make sure you set up your phone or your uh, laptop so that you get those notifications as soon as I post videos. All right, so let's get started a bit today. All right, guys, so let's get rolling. So we've covered a few of the environmental forces that affect marketing. Uh, today, we're going to cover economic forces um, and what they are. So let's first of all break it down. You might have heard these terminologies before. We've talked about microeconomics or sorry, macroeconomics before in class a little bit. I think we've touched on it briefly. Um, and then we're also going to look at microeconomics. So really, we need to, in order we, for us to move forward with this, we really need to understand the difference between the two. Um, because there is a big difference. Um, and it's something that you guys, if you're getting into marketing, you really need to fully understand. All right, so let's look at that now. Okay, so micro, macroeconomics, I keep doing that all the time, macroeconomics, right? What is it by definition? So it's the study of the econ behavior of the economy um, over a certain period of time. So some of the things that it looks at is unemployment. Um, it looks at um, growth rate. Uh, it looks at the GDP. Uh, many other variables depending on what you're measuring. Um, but macroeconomics, when you think of it, it's looking things on a global scale. Like if you think of... Um, um, macro computers or um, anything macro, I think it's big, right? Because um, if you think micro, you think of microchips, computers, they think small, it's tiny. When you think macro, you think big, right? So we're looking at things on a larger scale. So um, you could be looking at it from a country side, you can look at it from a provincial side, city side, all these variables can play a role. Um, you can also look at it even from a company standpoint where it's a little bit bigger. So a multinational company um, could technically be looked at, you look at the macroeconomics of that company. Uh, breaking it down, it's a little bit gray area. Um, but as far as marketing terms and what we're looking at right now, I mean, that's something that obviously plays a huge role. Um, but I want to be looking today, we want to look at more detail, understanding microeconomics, because that really has a direct impact on uh, marketing and how it affects you as far as your projects go um, in the future. All right, so let's look at those now. So let's say um, John works at McD's and he makes um, $10 an hour and on average let's say he works 20 hours 20 hours per week right so how much money does he make a week right and if you said $200, you would be correct. However, uh, for those that have part-time jobs, you would know that this isn't what you get on your paycheck. Something happens. You don't get this amount, right? You probably get somewhere in the range of, oh, I don't know, maybe $178, somewhere in that ballpark, depending on a certain bracket that you may fall into, right? So what comes off of the $200? If you said taxes, you would be correct. So once he gets paid the $200, um, the government takes his tax. So he would, let's keep the math simple. Actually, let me just I'm gonna erase this. Oops, erase this. And let's write over here. So he makes the $200. And then he gets tax taken off. So keeping math simple, let's assume that he gets $20 taken off. And that's income tax that some of you maybe have already taken off. But because you're students, you'll get it all back um, when it's time to do your tax return. <clears throat> so now Johnny, who works at McDonald's, actually takes home $180. Right? We minus the $20. 
So now you think about what does Johnny have to pay? <clears throat> Johnny lives on his own. Uh, he drives a car uh, and he rents out a house, um, a basement apartment because he's going to college. So what is the first thing Johnny has to pay? Well, if you said some of the things that you would need would be food. What else? Rent. Right. What else might he make? Gas for his car. And with that, with gas comes insurance. Right. Maybe payments because he didn't pay it out right. So he's got a loan going with the the uh, car. Um, what else would he need? Food, rent, gas, clothing. Right. Anything else? Yeah, bills with respects to, I mean, it could be numerous things. It could be credit cards, it could be uh, hydro, uh, what else could it be? Anything else with regards to bills? It could be any um, uh, loans, school loans. Loans, right? <clears throat> so all that. So let's assume. I mean, there's many others, but we'll just assume. I mean, we another one that I tend to forget all the time that's really common right now is your phone bill, right? That's a biggie. Let's call that what it is, right? Okay. So after all that's said and done, let's say that is equivalent to, oh, I don't know, a hundred and thirty dollars, because that's quite a bit of things that he has to pay first before he does anything with regards to um, spending on anything else. So how much does he have left over? Right, if you said 50 bucks, right, is what he has, Johnny has left over per week <clears throat> to spend on what? What would he spend that on? Right, so you could say he could maybe spend it on going to the movies, right? He could spend it on going on trips, trips. Um, he could watch it um, maybe on streaming services. So which kind of ties into the movies, but could be separate. Out here I was talking more about actually going to a brick and mortar movie theater where here he would be downloading uh, movies because that's a big thing right now so you wouldn't be streaming as much um, if you have any significant other it could be gifts right uh, and I mean that and anything else basically that he feels that he would want and that's a key word uh, to look at because it really helps define this because when you're looking at student um, management with regards to their income. Um, this is something we always get confused. And this gets kind of gray area, right? Because a lot of times these things kind of slide into this category up here. So uh, I like to define it a little bit differently. Um, I like to look at it this way. This is a real easy way to do it. Needs, right? You need food. And some would argue you need your phone, but that's okay. Uh, you need to pay rent, you need to pay gas, um, you need to have clothing, you need to have all those things. And really it's needs versus wants. And I like using this because that really helps to define it, right? You want to go on, go out to the movies, you want to go on a trip, you want to buy gifts maybe for your sniffing or other or what have you. So this is really what defines it. And people that struggle um, with their own personal financial management is this is a very blurry area, right? If you think about yourself, right? Going to McDonald's five days a week is not a need as far as food goes. It's a want when there's probably lots of food uh, at home, right? So um, that's what we're going to look at and we'll look at defining these a little differently in the next video. All right, so we've gone through the example now. Um, so let's look at it a little bit further and how it relates to this chart that economists use. It helps label things a little bit easier so that you understand how it ties into marketing really, really well.
So Johnny, uh, an example that we were used, uh, that we used, um, John makes uh, $10 an hour and he worked 20 hours a week working at McDonald's, right? Um, he thinks he's going to get paid $200, but that's not the case, right? So something happens to his paycheck. But first we need to understand one thing, right? Is that the very first um, payment that he thinks when it were his income, which is uh, $200, is known as gross income. Gross income is before tax. Guys, I need you to remember this. It's going to get very confusing if you get it mixed up. And also when you do equations, that'll be, I don't know, on the test, right? So remember, gross income before tax, right? So Johnny thinks he's getting $200. He doesn't. He opens up his paycheck. It says 180 in the example that we used uh, in the previous slide. Um, so now he's left with $180. Well, now what's he need to pay it on? Well, he needs to spend it on food, shelter, uh, rent. I think we also use examples of phone, uh, gas for the car, any things that he has to pay, right? It comes out maybe on a monthly basis or he has to, and something needs in order to survive, right? Clothing, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and that may change depending on uh, the person's lifestyle. Um, but for the most part, that's what uh, he spends the money on. That's known as disposable income. So after Johnny pays for all that stuff, what's he left with? Well, he's left with the things that he wants to spend, right? So we gave examples of movies. We gave the examples of maybe streaming. We've looked at gifts. Anything that he wants to spend it on. It could be anything like new electronics, new phone case, new charger, um, some new lighting, a new computer, whatever he wants, right? And that's really important to understand when we're explaining the difference between the two. And again, it depends on the person's lifestyle. Well, when we look at the wants, economists look at and call that discretionary income. So discretionary uh, income is the wants, the things that you don't have to buy, right? You could even possibly choose to save it. Um, when you're in times of going into uh, a recession, you tend to want to hold back. You don't want to spend money on those trips. You may not want to buy a new bike. You may not want to buy a new computer and the risk that you may need that money because that's the challenge that marketers need to understand is depending on what your product or service is, which category does it fall into? Does it fall into discretionary income or disposable income? Which one of these? And when you think about it, when you're going through a tough time in an economy, when people are not spending as much, which one would get affected most, right? Yeah, if you said discretionary income, you'd be correct. And that's where some companies need to struggle. You need to understand where the economy is as a whole so that when you're looking at your project or your assignment, how well it will do because if you're asking for money from the bank it's important because they're going to ask you these and saying how are you planning to survive all right so as a quick review right needs versus wants um it helps you define the two so on a test if i actually ask ask you um if johnny bought a new car um, where would that fall under? Would that fall under his disposable income or his discretionary income? If Johnny bought a new pair of shoes, would that be disposable or discretionary income? If Johnny went grocery shopping, would that be disposable or discretionary income, right? So make sure you know the difference between the two. And that's why I was like, the, it's the needs versus wants. All right. So there's a quick assignment on uh, D2L. So hit it up. Um, be careful. Be very careful numbers. There's a little bit of a trick in there. Take your time. Um, remember, gross income is before or after tax. Before, right? Disposable is after tax. So make sure you look at it. And also remember to hit that subscribe button uh, and to click on the little notification bell so that you get notifications on new assignments uh, as they come up. Um, if not, I'll see you next week.